we're on? Yes, we're on. Hello everyone, how you doing? This is your boy Joshua. In this video, I want to talk about fan behavior following the three incidents at the NBA games. First, you know, a, f a fan threw popcorn at a player at a Knicks game. Second, a fan threw a water bottle and missed Kyrie Irvin and could have hit someone else at a Celtics game at the TD Garden. And the latest from what I've heard was a fan stoning on the court. Now, I don't remember which game it was, but either way, you know, those kind of behavior at any games or any events, whether it's a sporting event, concert, or any other event, you know, that kind of fan behavior is unacceptable. Sure is. And I think it's time to, like, get more strict about, you know, bad fan behavior. Actually, fan behavior in general. Because, really... I know everyone's excited to go back to attending games and we're all going back to normal. You know, after after most states wouldn't allow fans inside the venues or limit the amount of venues depending on what state they're in. But really, now that we're all going back to normal and now that all COVID restrictions have been lifted in all 50 states, as far as I know, in Massachusetts, you know, the state of emergency will be lifted on June 15th, 2021. But really, we need to talk about fan behavior before everything goes back to normal. Because really, those three incidents was really on call for. And yes, I want to give props to Boston Police as well as TD Garden for making sure that fan leaves out in handcuffs because really there's no place for that yes I know respect goes both ways and yes I know and I watched Kyrie Irvin you know stomped on the Celtics logo yes it was disrespectful but what I know between him and the Celtics organization I don't know but either way you know he was wrong for what he did you know, even if the Celtics mistreated him, he was wrong. But well, as far as the fan, you know, he had no right to be throwing a bottle at him. And then when I saw on the camera, it looked like he was trying to plead with the security not to, like, arrest him or something. But, you know, you know, these 21-year-olds, they'd be all trying to, like, plead with the, no, don't do this, do this, I wouldn't do it again. I'm like... You know, my advice to that fan is said, hey, you should have thought of that before you even threw that bottle. You should have known better than that. But, you know, apparently nowadays, 21 is the new 10 to 13. Yep, I'll say it again. Apparently nowadays, 21 is the new age 10 to 13 years old. That's how it is, unfortunately, nowadays. But really, I don't care what age. That is uncalled for. Because Kyrie Irving or someone else he, he could have hit and could have got hurt. Because what if the bottle hit someone or not? That is still assault. That is still a restful offense. And yes, from what I've heard, he's been ordered to stay away from the TD Garden. And really... I know it took a little while to make this video because I had other things, but kept my word. And I think it's time to talk about fan behavior, not just at professional games, college games as well. And yes, I'm going to share this video, you know, with college officials as well as law enforcement agencies, whether if it's state, local, or federal, because really, because these type of events... You know, things can really escalate. And there are times where fans forget the fact they're adults. They start, you know, doing stupid things or throwing stupid things and stuff like that. It gets out of control. They cross the line. You know, and they, like, they get into with other fans for what? 
for wearing a different team's jersey and everything. Really. Because, you know, you go there to have a good time. I'm like, you go there, you know, make a good memory. You know, you don't go there to be act all stupid or anything like that. I'm like, there's no place for that. There isn't. And really, you know, people think I'm crazy for making this video, but do you think I care? I don't care. I don't care at all. Because this is something that needs to be addressed. This is. And we need to send a message. Because we cannot continue to tolerate this boys will be boys, girls will be girls, kids will be kids. No. See, what that Celtics fan went through, see, that should be an example. See, that should send a message to everyone. And that should be a lesson for everyone. That thing. That kind of behavior always have consequences. They always do. And I don't care if people disagree with me on this. Because every book that's being thrown at that Celtics fan for throwing bought out Kyrie Irving, he deserved every book that's being thrown at him. Every book. And yes, he should yes, he should be holding away the handcuffs. Because that will teach him a lesson. You know, show some respect. You know, respect yourself others around you when you're attending events in general. And now, I want to talk about college games because, yes, you know, college, you know, college fans, especially student fans, you know, they do say things that's really messed up and offensive. You know, sometimes they say things that's racist. You know, because back when, you know, Celtics player Marcus Smart was playing for Oklahoma State, Cowboys he was playing he was playing Texas Tech at Texas Tech and like for what happened was you know he might have fell into the, into the crowd and everything like that by accident but when I saw that when I saw when I first saw he hit that fan I was like whoa what's going on but it turns out that Texas Tech fan called him an n-word and that Texas Tech fan was white Ooh, and I was like, uh-uh. I'm like, I'm like, who knows what happened to that Texas Tech fan that called Marcus Smart a racial slur? Because whoever that Texas Tech fan is should should be banned from all sporting events. Because you don't go out there and call anyone a racial slur. You don't do that. No, an you know, no racial slurs, no anti-gay slurs, no sexist slurs, none of that stuff. Because there's no place for that. And yes, you know, and I'm glad, you know, Fenway Park here in Boston, you know, put up a banner that says Black Lives Matter that's along the Mass Pike. Oh yeah, because I remember it got torn down back in November 2020 by some vandals, but guess what? It got put right back up. Yeah, I know some people hate that sign and everything like that, but who cares? Who cares? Because see, myself as a black person, that's why I live with being every day. I live being black every day. Not only I live being black every day, I live being different every day. And trust me, I've been hated, discriminated against. Especially by this college team that I supposedly rooted for. I'll get more to that in this later in the video. But really, we need to like have a serious talk about fan behavior. We do. Because we can't keep letting this go on. We can't keep thinking that it's okay to do what they want. You can't let fans think, oh, you know, you can misbehave, do what you want. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, yeah. It's time to get strict on this. Because, you know, once this pandemic is over, you know, we should all learn how to be creative. You know, we gotta remind people that there's still rules in effect. There are some still COVID rules in effect. You know, whether the state of emergency is lifted or not. Because, you know, like I said before, and like, you know, the governors said before that private business can still keep COVID restrictions in place. Yes, they can, because that's their right. Because private business and owners can, you know, make up their own rules. And they all have a right to protect, you know, their customers 
their employees in their workplace. So if they require you to wear a mask, they can still require you to wear a mask. Because a lot of private companies, as well as private business owners and colleges, they're still not so sure about, you know, COVID going away and dying down because, you know, there are still variants out there. And in the United States, we don't know who's vaccinated and who's and who and who is vaccinated. So some settings gonna have like rules saying, you know, mass required, whether you're fully vaccinated or not. You know, some places will say masks will not be required for those that's fully vaccinated. And I'm sure everybody will take advantage of that because obviously it's illegal in the United States to ask people for proof. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, do I like that idea? No, but, you know, U.S. law is U.S. laws, even if it sucks. And, yes, I like to, like, talk with, you know, law enforcement agencies, you know, whether it's federal, state, local, campus, etc., as well as college officials, whether if it's government, state, public, private, city, etc. Because really, because that's where all that's where you'll see the most. Of, that's where here and see all the college fans and the student sections say the most offensive things. You know, such as going on Google, looking up the players, family members' name, and all that, and like they say messed up things about. The opposing team's family. That is on. That is not tolerated. We can't tolerate that. There's no place for that either. And I want to talk about you know how the president of Amherst College, Bibi Martin. I want to. I want to give props to her because because it was a it was an incident. You know, with the men's lacrosse team about racism. Yeah, I don't want to talk anymore about that, really, but I'm like, y'all can look it up, but really, you know, because in 2021, yeah, they they had to go through a year without a season, as far as I know, and yes, you know, making the men's lacrosse team go through a year without, you know, without a season was the right thing to do, and yes, I'm glad the Amherst College president fired that men's lacrosse head coach because there's no place for that and yes I agree what she said the culture must change because we can't have that type of behavior going on anywhere because see colleges are supposed to be a safe space for everyone regardless of religious backgrounds regardless of race gender orientation political backgrounds it's supposed to be a safe place for everyone but apparently not because you know obviously you know we had a bad person I'm sorry but and no offense but yeah as a president and guess what look what it all turned into mm-hmm and now it's getting to a point you know, where the minorities, as well as, you know, LGBTQA plus students and employees at public colleges don't feel safe. They don't. Because all this racism and homophobic and hate and bigotry. You can't be tolerating that kind of stuff. You know, even at certain college games, I hear, like, you know racist, sexist, and homophobic remarks, you know, towards the opposing team. I've heard that before, and that's not, you know, that's uncalled for. And there was one time at a college game, you know, I saw this, you know, this kid in the student section, you know, he was swearing and everything, but then there's this event staff, you know, he don't care if you're allowed or anything, but he doesn't tolerate swearing. You know, regardless of you know, if the call is bad or not. He still don't like swearing, and then, you know, 
he just verbally got into it and all that. And guess what? There was a police officer standing right there alongside with a cheerleading coach for the home team. You know, as well as alongside with the hit with the cheerleading coach sister. That's the head coach for the opposing team. Standing right there, two people, you know, the student and the security guard going at it, making it all loud. And guess what? The officer stands right there, does nothing. But then 10 minutes later, two other officers came and spoke to that guy. I don't know what they were talking about. But then after that, he went and spoke to the security guard. And, like, you know, it was all good. But then, guess what? The fan didn't even get kicked out. See, See, this is the problem with entitlement. This is the problem with colleges, especially state colleges. Because fan behavior like that should not be tolerated. At all. And look, I don't care if anyone disagrees with my video. We need to put a stop to this, this unne you know, unacceptable fan behavior. It's all got to stop. Really. Because we all go out to have a good time, root for our teams and stuff like that. Set a good example. You know, see, this is why a lot of people don't seem to like sports. Do I blame them? No, I don't blame them. Can I blame them? No, I can't blame them. Because, see, because there are fans that forget the fact that they're adults. And, yes, yeah, sometimes it does, you know create unnecessary conflict, you know, especially when you're playing on either sports and anything like that. And I agree. You know, especially especially in football, you know, people get into it. Even in hockey, you know, I see people get into it as well. You know, I understand you want to show the person you're not soft. I understand, but you know, the thing is, professional players they get paid too much for that nonsense because they should know just turn around, walk away, or look the other way. You know, that's the right thing to do because when you're playing for a professional team, you're supposed to set a good example. You are considered a role model whether you like it or not. Same goes for college players, whether it's D1, D2, D3, D4, whatever. Same goes for the college players and cheerleaders in well you know yeah you're supposed to set a good example because you're not just role models on the court on the field or on the ice you're considered a role model off campus in general you are and also let me remind let me remind these college athletes and cheerleaders you know if this if the coach says you're on dry season you're on dry season. Look, I know being on dry season stinks. It does. But it's a good way to make you successful. It does. I know you can't go out and party or anything like that while the season's still in play. But look, that's how the coach wants you to succeed is, you know, give up the partying during the season. Give up the, you know, all that. But like I said, if the coach says you're on dry season, you follow it. Because that's how you can apply yourself as well as become a better student and a role model. You know, for the fans. You know, hopefully they'll follow your lead. And I know the athletes in college are friends with the, you know, student fans in the student section as well as, you know, friends with... You know, those are in the community and everything like that, which is cool. But, you know, you got to understand, you know, you want to celebrate, it's cool, but just, you know, <laughs> you just got to lower your limits and everything. You know, that's what it is. You know, I'm not trying to discourage people from having a good time. I'm not. Hey, you know, I was much, I was a lot, I was a party animal back then. I was. I am still am, but not much now because, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, you know, keeping it off for now because I'm still not so sure about the pandemic because 
even if the Massachusetts State of Emergency is, is scheduled to be lifted June 15, 2021, I'm still not sure about the pandemic, but it's still technically a pandemic. And like I said, you know, when I wanted to watch Game 4 of the Bruins, you know, I wanted to watch it, you know, one of the restaurants, you know, here in Boston, go watch that. But then when I saw I got it all crowded, I said, nah, uh, uh, uh. I just went up going to the North Shore and went over to a place called Hooters. You know, good times. You know, I didn't drink any alcohol while I was at Hooters, you know, in Saugus. Nah. I just had chicken wings and soda. You know, I brought my UMass Hockey National Championship banner and National Championship hockey sticks, as well as the puck with me. And, you know, I took a picture with it, you know, with the Hooters waitress that was serving me. That's what I did. You know, tough loss to the Bruins in Game 4 and Game 5 and Game 6. Yeah, it was tough. And the Bruins are out. But yeah, apparently it's not their year. And I want Tuca to, you know, get better. You know, I wish they could have pulled him and let the backup take over. Because, you know, really, even if we did lose, it will still give Tuca some resting time, you know, if he really is hurting. And also, even if we, if we lost with the backup goalie, the backup goalie still would have got some playing time. And still got more experience because he will learn from it. But yeah. But let's get on fan behavior. We need to like remind people, send reminders, you know, whether it's by you know, text message, phone call, emails, social media channels, etc. We need to remind everyone that bad fan behavior will not be tolerated. We need to send a message. Cause really, we can't just go around thinking that, you know, boys would be boys, girls would be girls, it's okay to misbehave, it's okay to say offensive, racist, sexist, homophobic things at any kind of events. We can't, we can't tolerate that. We can't allow, you know, people to think it's okay to say all that. You know, I'm, and I give props to the, the Major League Baseball, the NHL, the NBA, the Premier Lacrosse League, you know, with signs saying, say no to racism. You know, um, I give them a huge shout out for that because they want fans to be welcome regardless of race, gender, orientation, etc. Because, see, those sporting events are supposed to be safe space for everyone. Because, hey, when I went to a premier lacrosse game at Gillette Stadium on June 4th, 2021, I had a good time. First time going to a sport event in over a year since the pandemic started. I had a good time. You know, and a woman, you know, took a picture of me on the Jumbotron Gillette Stadium. And, of course, you know, the, the father of UMass men's lacrosse legend as well as University of Utah known as the U of U UDs assistant men's lacrosse coach Will Manning see his dad took a photo and video of me <laughs> you know dancing on the Jumatron flexing like this <laughs> yeah it was a good time but hey I didn't swear I didn't say anything offensive you know, I chanted defense. You no, know, I may have said, you know, shot, 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 everybody. <laughs> you know, I was trying to get, you know, the Lacrosse Canyons Club, or should I say, Lacrosse Club Canyons, whatever they call them now. It's not the Boston Canyons anymore. Be the way. <laughs> I'm trying to get them to score. But did they lose? Yeah, they did. But, you know, still a good time. You know, still got the energy and everything like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good time. Good times indeed. But like I said, I enjoyed myself. I sure did. 
and I'll continue to cheer at games and stuff like that, I will. I'll continue to be loud. I'm going to continue to be proud. Of course, I'm going to keep it clean. You know, Matty G said it himself. Or, yeah, Matt, Matty G Goldstein says, Be loud, be proud, keep it clean. He's right. Because they, even at the UMass Amherst basketball games, he always yells, UMass fans on your feet. Oh, that's always fun because it makes it fun when he when he like says that in the middle of the floor. But he doesn't do that anymore. He just says that in the broadcast desk. You know, yeah, things have changed over the years. They have I'm like some for good reasons, some for bad reasons. But either way, you know, I like it. I like it when he yells, "You mass fans on your feet." You know, get the fans. You know pumped up and everything like that. Plus, he even made me fan of the game at UMass Amherst Basketball Games. He yeah. have. Yeah. Well, you know, we just want the games to be fun. That's what I want. You know, I'm not trying to discourage people from rooting for their teams or anything like that. I'm not trying to, like, get anyone in trouble, but really, people need to learn that if you're going to be disruptive, you know, and say offensive things about, you know, the competitor or their family, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be. Because that, be that kind of behavior always have consequences. And yes, we do need to send a message. And that's why... I'm urging all college officials, actually, I'm strongly, strongly, strongly urging all college officials, whether if it's D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, I don't care what division it is, to send a message to all student fans that saying inappropriate, offensive things towards the competitors or about their families will not be tolerated. No. We cannot tolerate that. We cannot, you know, allow people to think it's okay to be, bo you know, boys be boys, girls be girls, kids be kids. No. We can't allow these kind of behaviors around here. We can't. And yes, I am strongly, strongly telling college officials to remind fans about behaviors like what happened at the TD Garden. Because that was unacceptable. And yes, the fan that threw a water bottle at Kyrie Irving and Miss, he still got arrested, he still got charged, and he still ordered to stay away from TD Garden. That's right. Yes. And let that be a lesson to everyone. Let that be a lesson to everyone. Because we cannot tolerate that kind of stuff. There's no place for that. I'll say it again. We cannot tolerate that kind of fan behavior. There's no place for that. But anyways. You know. If you think I'm ranting. You know. You're wrong. And second. I don't, I don't use words rants like that. Because see. When you say the person's ranting and all that. It's like you're trying to discourage people from breaking their silence and speaking out. Or speaking their mind. See, I don't use words like that. I don't. But, you know, this, as of now, this is, this is it for the video on fan behavior. You know, it wasn't easy putting this together. Was it easy? No, it wasn't. But I still have the courage to make this video. And yes, some people might give me props, I might not. But either way, I'm not afraid to break my silence. Especially when it comes to fan behavior. But until then, everyone, you know, when you go to a sporting event, please be respectful to yourself as well as others. You know, you know, be, you know, be considered respectful of your neighbors that's, you know, sitting or standing next to you. You know, 
be be considerate of the person that's you know that you're sitting in front of, or the person that's standing behind you. You know, you know, I know you want to you know stand up and take pictures, and everything like that. But you know, at least try to find a spot where you can take a photo without blocking anyone's view. You know, I know it's I know it's very challenging depending on the venue in the stadium. At professional or college games or anything like that, but like I said, please be considerate of your, you know, fellow spectators and all that. If you go and attend any kind of sporting event, concert, etc. All right. So everyone, until I make the next video on fan behavior, be safe, be well, wash your hands. And please remember, if somebody still wants to social distance, you have to respect that as well. All right. For those of you who supported my video, who support my videos and continue to do so today in 2021, I appreciate that. And last but not least, I can finally smell at the end of the videos now that the mask mandate has been lifted in Massachusetts. That's right. I'm happy about that. <laughs> I'll do it again. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, everyone. Thank you for watching my videos. And I hope to see y'all soon. Thank you.